Hello, I'm your lover Picard and welcome to beautiful Le Maison France. In today's video I have an exceptionally cool and rare vehicle to show you. But before I talk about the vehicle itself, I want to talk about the person that owns it. Because my friend Pierre is a little bit timid and he doesn't want to be in the video. But I can't do this car justice without talking about the man who owns it. My friend Pierre is a lifelong Citroen obsessive to the point where he's actually a Citroen specialist and devotes his life to working on and making sure old Citroens live. And he has one of the coolest Citroen collections, all Citroen collections, that I've ever seen. And the other day I asked him if I could film one of his cars. And he says, well, of course, Oliver. Come on. Yeah, of course you can. What? what car do you want to film? And I said to him, well, can I film your garage van? And he's like, oh, oh okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> so without further ado, this is my friend Pierre's 1976 Citroen AK250. Regular viewers of the channel may have seen that a while ago I made a video about cars for young people. Classic first cars. Because my nephew will soon be passing his driving test and I wanted to make a list to inspire young people to drive cool old cars. And my choice for the perfect classic 2CV, first 2CV for a young person, was the AK250 van. Because one, I absolutely love these things. Two, it's a van, so it has cheaper insurance. Three, it has a tiny little 435cc engine that makes 24 horsepower. And vans are super, super cool. It's not quite big enough to sleep in, but I think, well, it's not quite big enough for me to sleep in, but very few things are. Most beds aren't big enough for me to sleep in. But it is an absolutely smashing little van it's from here forward it's basically a 2cv4 but from here back it's brilliant now what separates a 2cv van from a normal 2cv well to start with good in a normal 2cv you have a fuel filler cap here and that's because the fuel tank is between the back wheels and in a 2cv you have a hump that goes from back here all the way across inside the car and that lifts the back seats up so that if you have kids the kids can see out and over the top it works really well in the saloon car but a van has a flat floor a flat floor not a flat floor <laughs> so the fuel tank in a 2cv van is actually stood up and sideways and this allows a much flatter floor in the back and if we go around the other side with the exorcism of the hump from the back of the vehicle, there's nowhere to store the spare tire. So, in here we have, I actually have to do it like this, because these are really strong springs. In here we have the spare wheel. And the exhaust exits in front of the back wheel, not behind it. And a 2CV van is actually, oh you we good. A 2CV van is actually slightly shorter than a 2CV car in most cases because it doesn't have the big bumpers on the back. Being a 1976 model, this actually has shock absorbers on the front and back, uh, meaning that it actually is slightly stiffer sprung than my car and rides beautifully, especially for a small van. One thing I really need to give Pierre his dues on is that Pierre's work van and all his two CVs are all using the correct Michelin X tires. You know, when I talk about Michelin Xs with a lot of people, they always say, well, it, they're really expensive and it's okay if you've got a show car that doesn't really get driven, but for people who actually drive their cars, I'd rather go with the cheap Chinese ones. But here is Pierre with his work van that really gets used, that really gets driven, driving on the correct set of Michelin tyres that were actually designed for this car. 
and it's my opinion that a 2CV doesn't drive quite right on anything else. Under the bonnet we of course have the 435cc engine but this isn't the same as my 425 don't get those confused this is a much more modern engine based a lot based around the 2CV6 engine the 602 so it has an alternator it has a 12 volt battery it has a proper modern voltage regulator it still has a crank handle don't get me wrong but it has the heat exchangers over the top of the engine rather than the exhaust going down the front of the engine like this it's a much more modern neat and tidy package and this might not have the power of the 602 but if you are a business trying to run on a shoestring and you're, you're trying to be frugal then the savings in fuel especially if you're running around a village and stuff like that of this little engine were absolutely perfect but they didn't actually sell many of these vans unfortunately um, and the ones that they did sell were just run into the ground and so today this little AK250 is actually one of the rarest 2CVs that money can buy which is kind of a shame you know people use them and use them and use them and what a lot of people did was they put stuff in the back and they used to slide stuff into the van and what that does of course it scratches the paint in the back of the van and then that allows rust and so they rust it out and these later 2CVs weren't the best at resisting rust so sadly many of them died which is a real shame because they are fantastic little vans and like I say very rare now so in the back rather than a big back bumper you've got these chunky grab rails and steps and when we open it the hinges on the back stop the doors swinging wide and breaking that and that locks the doors in place in the back here obviously there's a load of 2CV bits because this is a shop van but as you can see it has this huge flat floor that runs all the way to the front seats and this one actually has a guard to stop things sliding forward into the back of your seats. Some 2CV vans did come with an optional back seat that folds up against the, uh, against the front ones, much like my Enac kit in Jolene. But this one doesn't have it. It also doesn't have side windows, which I prefer. I think it looks better, but some people love them. Um, the side windows were a very popular option because what a lot of people did was turn these into kind of their day-to-day -day cars and then cars that could take the kids to school and then pigs to market. It was kind of this super utilitarian vehicle that could do everything and this was the answer to a lot of people's prayers. Another cool little feature of 2CV vans is the fact that the wing mirrors are really long. They're on these really long stalks because they have to be able to see past this edge of the van back. And on the other side, it has a little bend in it to make it shorter. Um, but this means that when you buy 2CV wing mirrors, you have to make sure you get the right one because the last thing you want is a bend when you need a straight one and the last thing you want is a 2CV car wing mirror which is about this long on a 2CV van because all you'll get is a really good view of the back of your van. One cool little feature this being an early 70s van is it has door locks very similar to my 2CV from the 1960s but the door handles are actually over here. The catch is there and then there's a rod inside the door that opens the door from there and a little door pull here and it it kind of makes me chuckle that instead of redesigning the door catch when they redesigned the door handle and the full system they kept the mechanism exactly as it was in the 60s because they knew it worked they just gave it a little plinth to stand on and then made this rather complicated arrangement for opening the door but it's very cute and i like it here inside it's all a bit echoey because obviously there's no interior and we have the classic seat pad style seat covers and these are of course 
brown vinyl. So they are hot in summer and freezing in winter. Um, but these are here for the simple fact that they are super easy to wipe down and clean. Being a 70s van, in here for the first time ever we have the mounts for seat belts. And this is another reason I suggested this period of van for the uh, for a first car, because having the early seat belts. By the way, see this the bracket? That's your seat belt. They aren't inertia real seat belts. They are seat belts that you adjust, and then when you're done, you hang it back up here on its little thing. <laughs> and of course, we have the mid '70s seat belt buckles with the button on the side that are nice and skinny in the dashboard it's actually quite cushy and nice we have the big Viglia um, gauge pod which you will be familiar with with many uh, Citroen 2 CVs from the early 70s and also Diane's we have the nice brown wheel I actually like this color of brown for the interior I think it's nicer than the black and we have rare options of an ashtray and a factory glove box which is kind of awesome but other than that it's very typical 2CV we only have one of these foam filled sun visors which I've removed from my car because they get in the way rather than two but yeah it was designed to be the very base shop vehicle but it's actually quite comfy in here it's quite nice and these seat pads if you're wondering about these sorts of seat pads and whether these sorts of seat pads are comfortable in the earlier vehicles in my opinion they can actually be more comfortable than the uh, later ones but they do tend to rub on my shoulders up top here but yeah they're very very comfortable and if you're taller they can um, they sit you lower in the car so that you're not like this so if you're a tall person, don't be afraid of, of seat pads like this in, in two CVs. Um, I would, however, tell you that the fabric ones are nicer than the vinyl ones. And of course, being a 70s van, it has the tiny steering wheel, which is much smaller than my 1960s 2CV. Um, it feels very odd after getting out of a 1960s 2CV, but this is a very nice wheel. It's a lot nicer than the foam padded ones that you get in uh, Diane's, for example but it's a lovely little thing these vans are a huge part of what made the 2CV amazing I really love this little AK250 van because it is the bottom of the rung it is the smallest engine it is the most basic that 2CVs ever got even though it's actually quite cool because it has the glove box and all that stuff it's much more than the sum of its parts though because this was an affordable lifeline for small businesses this delivered bread it was a butcher's van they were builders vans they supported people like my friend Pierre who's you know a small business owner who runs his own garage these vans really are super cars because they may not be super cars but these little vans are incredible because they, they service like I said they service all of us they are massively important and support so many people and have impact on so many people's lives you know you can have never have sat in a, an AK250 van or a Catrell van but they delivered the post you know they they literally powered France and so these little vans are a huge part of French culture even if you've never been in one every single person you meet in your day has had their life affected by a small van like this and it's the reason why small vans like the AK250 like the AK400 like the uh, Acadian like the Caterell van like um, like this is like the Renault Kangoo and the Citroen Berlingo today you know these vans are are still very much going in spirit because the companies that made this van it was so successful that they make vans like it today and I absolutely adore it I think it's superb I love it the brilliant and this one is completely unrestored it is completely original but it's slightly worn and it's slightly faded and it's slightly 
worked because it is a works van. Thank you all for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. It helps me massively. Uh, it's the best way you can support this channel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like. Please be awesome to each other, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.